All thanks and praise is due to Allah. We seek his help and his forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and the consequences of our evil deeds. Whoever Allah guides will never be led astray and whoever Allah leads astray will never find guidance. I bear witness there is no God but Allah, alone without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is his servant and his messenger. You who believe, be mindful of God as is due and make sure you devote yourselves to him to your dying moment. I'm so honored to be here with you today to share some of my thoughts on what it means to be a Khalifa or a steward of the earth, both of God's people and of the planet. For a while now, I've been wrestling with the question of what God wants me to say to the world. We may ask ourselves similar questions of meaning, of longing, of legacy. Why are we here? God tells us our purpose is worship, which takes many forms, prayer, fasting, good deeds, charity. And what I'm gonna talk about today, social and environmental justice, which is how I'm frame, framing being a steward of the earth. To me, being a steward means owning your story, owning your impact on the earth, owning your power as a trustee of God's covenant. There is no one else coming. We are it. We sit here today in the City of Angels, in the historic Pico Union Project, miles from South LA, where the city burned years ago because of police brutality and institutional racism against our black brothers and sisters which still runs deep. This is the city where immigrants seek gainful work for a better life while finding themselves struggling every day. A city where housing is not affordable, where race tensions are high, where water is scarce, where environmental degradation negatively impacts poor communities of color the most. Perhaps I'm painting a really bleak picture, but this is the reality. In a city that gets known for Hollywood, films, luxury, and sunshine, this is the other Los Angeles. And I'm here today to talk to you about the amana, or covenant, God bestowed on mankind and the choice we have to take it on. Allah said to Adam, Islam, I have offered the amana, or the covenant, to the heavens and the earth and the mountains and they could not bear it. Will you take it on? He said. Adam said, oh Lord, what does it involve? He, God said, if you do good, you will be rewarded. And if you do evil, you will be punished. So Adam took on the amana, or the covenant, and bore it. Surah Ahzab 33, 33, 72. God is describing the covenant as a responsibility, a stewardship, and ultimately, giving mankind the possibility of doing good work to elevate God in the physical world and also the possibility of messing up. I said the word wrestle earlier because it is a true struggle. That search for meaning, that search of doing good works that raises the remembrance of God in our broken world. That search for peace within in the dichotomy of knowing we are not heroes, and we can do so much. That search of legacy to carry on the work of our ancestors in a way that honors them. That struggle for me began early on when I saw my parents, immigrants from Pakistan, strive to be seen. My mom came to the US with no knowledge of English and took classes at night to be understood my dad, may he rest in peace, 
sacrificed so much to give my two siblings and I an education because to him, education was liberation. Their investment in me was so much more meaningful knowing our ancestry came from colonization where their skin color as brown people was seen as less than. Years back, I found myself in environmental work teaching Muslims about stewardship, not wasting so much water during wudu, getting rid of styrofoam at the mosque because that stuff doesn't decompose being more mindful of our impact, looking at fasting more deeply as a radical act against our consumption-based society. I led Green Muslims in, in Washington, D.C. for a number of years. I was trying to create spaces where Muslims could make more connections between nature and God's bounty. In turn, feeling a sense of responsibility or ownership of taking on their covenant to protect the earth. The reason why this work was so meaningful to me is in the Quran, God identifies nature as a tapestry of signs for man to reflect upon his existence. Just as the verses within the Quran are also considered signs, sharing the Arabic word ayat, which means signs, This relationship is further deepened by many chapters within the Quran that take the name of natural phenomenon, such as the bee, the fig, the light, and so on. This makes the conversation between nature and scripture explicit. I felt like by working to protect the earth, I was protecting the trees, the rivers, the mountains, the animals, etc that were there to be signs for me to reflect on Allah, not only for myself, but for future generations. Environmental stewardship could look like a lot of things for you all in different ways. The point is being aware of your impact, being aware of your responsibility, being aware of your power. I now work as a community organizer with a faith-based organization, LA Voice. We work in mosques, synagogues, and churches across LA, developing grassroots leaders to work on issues that create a more just LA. In the fall, we helped pass Proposition 47, a law that turns nonviolent felonies into misdemeanors. In turn, bringing redemption, healing, and second chances into the criminal justice system. So what is the South Asian woman doing organizing black and Latino families, including Muslims in LA, to dismantle mass incarceration? I believe every person has the right to opportunity, regardless of their background. This is the sunnah as I come to understand it, or the straight path. I believe if the prophet, peace be upon him, were alive today, he would be fighting for the vulnerable, the overlooked, the impoverished, and he would be strategizing with them on how to create a more just society. He is my example. As stewards of the earth, we're asked to bring about justice. Oh, you who believe, stand out firmly for justice as witnesses to Allah. Even though it be against yourselves, or your parents, or your kin. Be he rich or poor, Allah is a protector to both. So follow not the lusts of your heart, lest you may avoid justice. And if you distort your witness or refuse to give it, very Allah is ever well acquainted with what you do. Surah Al-Nisa 4, 135. We know this is not a just society for all the reasons I mentioned earlier. Muslims are profiled and mapped. Islamophobia is rampant, even though it's experienced differently by different subsects of the Muslim community. We know that African Americans are more likely to get imprisoned and harsher sentences than their white counterparts. They're also more likely to be brutalized by police and other races. 
We know that the jails and prisons in California are filled with people who are mostly black and Latino. We know that the response to drugs being rampant in many impoverished communities was to imprison them rather than give them rehabilitative treatment that they need. This reminds me of a friend at Homeboy Industries where I organize, which provides services to ex-gang members seeking help after entering back into society. This friend spent years in prison for a drug addiction. He told me he was never asked if he needed treatment, but instead, the prison system was used as a way to rehabilitate him, even though we know the conditions in the jail system only make things worse. Many, like my friend, made choices based on life experiences of poverty and lack of investment in their communities. This is all to say that systemic racism in this country still exists. The first step is asking ourselves, how does racism exist within us? Do we see a person of a different race as fully human? And if not, why? Our Muslim communities incorporate the same racial hierarchy that the rest of America does. A common criticism of immigrants, Pakistani or South Asian mosques is that they're not in solidarity with their African American brothers and sisters in Islam. If we're supposed to be living examples of the Prophet's message, then we have to address this question. How will we deal with the racial hierarchy that exists inside our own communities? God is challenging us on this. God says, I have made you into nations and tribes that you may know one another. Do we really know one another? Or do we keep ourselves separate so that we all suffer? This ummah is not fully an ummah unless we know what all of our brothers and sisters are going through. Unless we've reached out or at the very least challenged our own internal struggles. We have to fix it inside. We may be upset that people in faraway lands are killing in the name of the Prophet ﷺ. Perhaps that makes us feel helpless. Let's figure it out internally first. Be kinder to our neighbor. Wage beauty and, and peace against the vitriol. Remember that the Prophet, peace be upon him, who had trash thrown on him by a woman repeatedly, and even after all of that, visited her when she was sick. That's our example. That's our tradition. Remember Hajar, a woman seen as less than the stature of Sarah, but she was closer to God than most. There's an entire section of the Hajj devoted to her reliance and need for God to provide water for her child. This is the role a poor woman of color was given by God. She is remembered every year by millions of pilgrims and certainly every day for her complete reliance on the constant. The fight for creating a more whole world is my work. Racial justice, environmental issues, poverty are all linked for me. Your work may look different. It can take so many forms. Just do the work that acknowledges taking on the covenant to protect the earth and its people. We have a beautiful tradition that reminds us leadership is about demanding and inspiring change. The prophet, peace be upon him, was the lone ranger when he brought his message. What sustained him was his belief in the constant. He was breaking out of a system and the path wasn't entirely clear. In fact, it was riddled with heartache, violent opposition, but he still rose. He was concerned about equality and the welfare of even those who didn't want his success. He was given a unique voice based on a set of experiences and a narrative that helped lead him with empathy and authentic action. When I need to remember what it means to live an inspired life, that's where I go. Now imagine meeting the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Imagine that. This is the same man who was found crying one day. The companion said, what makes you cry, O messenger of Allah? He said, I miss my brothers. 
They said, are we not your brothers, O messenger of Allah? He said, no, you are my companions. My brothers are those who will come after me and they will believe in me without ever seeing me. We are those brothers and sisters. We are the ones he wept for. What will you say when you see him? How did you carry on his work in the beautiful diversity of ways that exist in this room? Did you have meaningful and loving relationships with your family and friends for the sake of God? Did you take care of an ailing parent? Did you raise incredible kids? Did you fight for just causes? Did you smile regularly? Did you act in humility? What will you say to him? Imagine that moment and live your life now in that way. I said, I said what I have to say. May God forgive us all. Alhamdulillah, praise be to God. I started talking about how the act of taking on stewardship was a struggle. It's not easy to be aware and feel the world so much around you. It's not easy to hold the heavy stories of people to care so much about the earth. This is the jihad or the internal struggle. Just the other day, I had a meltdown moment of how hard it was. For me, I carry another layer in addition on remembering God, which is wanting to carry on my dad's legacy. His passing is still recent, so the concept of sadaqa jariya, or ongoing charity, on behalf of someone who has passed weighs on me a lot. Ongoing charity is a way for the children or loved ones of someone who's passed to receive good deeds after they have left this earth. There are feelings of wanting to do the best work, of inadequacy, of self-doubt, of being too hard on myself, of not doing enough to lift my dad's name. But honestly, this is the internal fight. This is the striving I hope God rewards all of us for to name and struggle through our internal critics. The walls we have created within that make us entirely human. I'm reminded of Musa Salam, who asked in Surah Taha 20, 25 through 28, O oh my Lord, open my chest and ease my task for me. Remove the impediment from my speech so that they may understand what I say. Prophet Musa was asked to be understood by Pharaoh, the most powerful and arrogant ruler of his time. He asked God to remove his fear and fill his chest with light because he was asking for openness in his chest. He had a speech impediment that led him to ask for such a prayer from his creator. I wonder if Musa had self-doubt or wondered if he was the best person for the job. But he prayed, he strived, and kept going for the liberation of his people. We can strive to fight against injustice and we may not dismantle the racist system. 
we may convince ourselves we, and there's only one person or no one at all who's on our side. We may smile at someone and not get a smile back. We may conserve water during Wadu and California still runs out of water in a year. We may vote and the right policy or person doesn't pass or get elected. We have to keep striving. We must aim to let go of the outcome of our work and just trust that our reward and our healing is in the act themselves. So I challenge you to walk away today to name the walls we've all put up in ourselves to be fully liberated. I challenge you to love yourself more deeply, to find a special way of telling yourself of that love, to continue working through your own internal revolution. I challenge you to love your loved ones more deeply as creation of God that have been entrusted to you to be loved for the sake of Allah. I challenge you to conserve more, to spend less, or in whatever way works for you, be aware of your impact on the earth. I challenge you to heighten your awareness of the city you live in or are near to, to venture out to new places and with new people. And I'll leave you with one final question before I go into the, the prayer. What if we saw each other, ourselves, and the earth the way God sees us? What's possible? Join me in dua, in prayer. O oh, the generous one, make us among the grateful ones by your words, actions, and purity of heart. The expediter one, bless us with the means to give back through our money and time so we can be of service to you. The giver of all, bless our families with health, self-awareness, and fortitude to continue on the path you have bestowed. The most loving for those of us seeking partnership Fill that process with ease. Make us partners you are pleased with. If we desire children, give us children you are pleased with and a resurrection that you are pleased with. The giver, give our parents peace. Heal them from the hardships of this world. Shield them from the sadness that comes from them closest to them and empower them to enjoy the rest of their lives. The opener, give us the wherewithal to seek knowledge understanding, memorization, and the implementation of the Quran. Further, give us the strength to implement knowledge into action. The most gentle, make us gentle and humble leaders from the people. Help us fight against injustice. Give our voices power because of its sincerity and compassion. Grant us success in causes that elevate you. Grant us humility and guard us against being too clever or too smart against our own good. The giver of peace, grant us wisdom and peace. The forgiver, forgive our sins, the ones committed against our eyes, hands, tongues, and ears. Forgive us, for we are nothing without your forgiveness. If anyone holds an ill thought for us, Open that situation up so that we had a chance of knowing and changing and showing them our purest form. The healer, allow us healing for our, our eyes to continue, continue seeing your blessed bounty. Make us grateful for every ray of sunshine, every flower petal, every smiling baby, every glance at a loved one. You are the giver of all things and to you we come alone for healing. The most compassionate, grant us compassion to continue respecting and loving all of the covenants you have bestowed upon us. The earth, its people, our bodies, the vessels you have let us borrow and gifts that protect our souls. The inspirer of faith, inspire us. Never let us become jaded, disheartened, overwhelmed, and unaffected 
by the woes of this world. Let us see the woes as an opportunity to act. Let us always feel the plastic in the beaches in our hearts. Let us feel the suffering of women who have been silenced in our souls. Let us be moved by the impoverished who seek sustenance that only you can give. Give us the strength to be your soldier on this beautiful world you have perfectly crafted to hold us. God commands justice, doing good, and generosity towards relatives, and he forbids what is shameful, blameworthy, and oppressive. He teaches you so that you may take heed. Wa'akim anas salam.